Hey, welcome back. And I know it's been a while. I'm sorry I haven't put out a video in a while, but I really wanted to make the best of what I had. It's hard to get a complete project in one video. But what I want to explain in this video is why I went the route I did with the hatches. And one of them has to do with something I learned from a guy named Randy Wilcox. Uh, he explained to me how he used to fix the buses and access these, the trough in the middle of the bus. And having to do with this here has a lot to do with why the hatches are there. So if you're building a bus conversion and you're thinking about building out the entire floor without access to the underneath, then I think it's important to watch this video. So stick with me, let's get started. Hopefully this helps someone out. The plan is, is that I'm gonna remark these distinctively so I know, like say this hatch ends here, I'm gonna clearly mark it for like hatch one and then hatch two, whatever, or three, whatever these are marked as. This way I'll keep everything together. That way when everything's glued to the hatches, we just have to get these lines marked here. Like you can see we're hanging over about a quarter inch, half inch there. So we'll push these back and we'll get the, this first one laid out and we're gonna work our way all the way back to the end of the bathroom. I gotta get the rest of that carpet out of there. What was holding me up back here from finishing the floors, like every, all these I numbered, but what's holding me up right here is that it's getting it, it's getting tight because they're not interlocked. So it's it's better off to this point that I get that hatch completed, this hatch completed, and then from here we can interlock everything and pull the tape off. Once I get it all laid out to here, we're gonna have to run a string line and rescore these with the saw. That's the only way I know to get the floor back to where it was and then we'll just glue down the rest of the floor here. The hole for the center here where the threaded rod goes for the hatch. The point is, is this is the paper template I saved from making the wooden templates. Folded it in half and found the center line. And then I used that center line to mark with the drill. Like we're gonna put this in there and this is an inch and a half. So as you can see, it's, it's almost the exact with that center point. So the cats are in, in case you haven't heard that. Right cats? Right, Pa? Bubs? Oh my God. The wood is screwed down. This is just a filler piece that the new floor is gonna match up to. We gotta order that too. And hopefully that'll match up pretty good like this. It'll come up to about three eighths. 
I think I found something I like. So now we could sharpen up them corners and drop this in. Second, I am not a precision anything. So like if you can see, this right here is a little tight. So let's mark this side from here up. It's got to be shaved. And here to there, it's got to be shaved. This side looks good. And so does the back. Maybe right here. Try to shave it with this here. Sometimes when you do things, the very first one you do is the best one. And then you get sloppy. You hope to God that someone appreciates this someday. I'm going to sand around this edge a little bit and see if that improves. This is one of those drawing like racers. Um, it's pretty spongy like and it cleans the sandpaper up pretty good. So what we're going to do is just go around this edge and just see if it's that. So see that clog like? It comes right out. It's definitely better. I mean, we're almost flush. Quick note, um, I want to show you, this is a gasket material, and I, I just made this gasket. This gasket is going to act like a shim to go in here. And reason being is, I, I, I did this last night, I thought when I routered in this hardware that I went a little too deep on the cut for the top edge. So when I screwed it down, it was like maybe a sixteenth of an inch below the surface. I didn't video it. Once you screw it down, it's a little further down. I want it to sit like that right there. And I ordered flooring to fill in this area, which is going to be like a, a vinyl laminate or whatever it is. So you can see it's still a little, a little low back there. But I can live with that. So that's what I'm talking about. See that little ledge there? But that's that's good enough. And that that little bit's bothering me. Ah! Yeah. What can you do? I'm using this plunge router. The plunge router's got this three-stage setting here. That's probably a quarter inch a piece each step. So I tried to set, you know, one depth, the second depth, whatever. The two actually two depths, these two. And then you could tweak. The adjustment right here so I tweak it a little bit well when I tweaked that top one I I went a little I let it go too much thinking ah, it'll be fine and it's temporarily mocked up screwed down the floors are screwed down nothing is glued down but once I'm a good with this being perfect like okay we can move on to the next hatch this hard this is gonna come all back apart and we're gonna glue the hardwood floors back down with uh, that glue. So anyways, we're gonna fit that in the bus and then we're gonna mark this thread similar to the other thread that I did on the, on the hatch for the back bedroom. See if that depth for the latches is continuous through the bus. Write that measurement, which I think is an inch and five eighths and do that consistently through the rest of them. Quick explanation here. So this is our leftover piece for what we cut off this floor and we tried to get all the ends back together we got one piece that's loose here right here we can pull this hatch up but before i pull the hatch up take a marker and we're going to make marks to where everything goes at least up to here so we don't lose the pattern so now we can take this floor apart in like one piece. It should hold together enough that the pieces don't come apart. And then we can square up that end once we get it inside. 
and clamp it down like we did the last one. Get this hatchet. Front of the bus. We'll do it over here just in case we lose on your router. All right, hello everybody. And hi with your crooked camera. <laughs> so <laughs> I glued up the hatch here. And when I say I glued it up, I screwed them together temporarily, thinking that when I would get back to putting the wood flooring on, I'll glue everything together and make it one solid piece. Now this piece here in particular, there's some screws sticking through. We're gonna take the grinder, grind them off. The one that's in the bus right now um, has some screws that have to be ground off the tips. And I know I only screwed this one in the center here. And then we're gonna start laying out the hardwood on the top side. And then this one will be the third hatch we routered in the latching hardware. I took the extra time to, to tape and label the hardwood floors, there's tape all over the high hardwood floors, which is good. It's holding all the interlocking pieces together. And then that will be screwed in on the ends. The hardwood floor will be screwed down to this. Then we'll router in the, the hatch hardware and I'll screw like I did the last one, probably up to about three quarters of the way. And then the back half will mark the edge of it once I know all the boards are tight together. And we'll cut that square and that gives us the tail end of this hatch and the beginning of the next hatch. So hopefully that speeds up this whole process because the first one was kind of just figuring out the hardwood and then, you know, making sure I didn't make any mistakes and I can keep pushing forward. So from here out, I'm hoping this is a speedier process. These hatches are made to be in their place. So let's get rolling. is we got that deck screwed from the bottom up, screwed like every fourth board and the corners. Take it out in the bus, match up the flooring, make sure I have the alignment correct, bring it back in and then we can lay out the template and push forward. The hatch building process was pretty much the same as what you saw just now, besides this glue up part. If I had to do it all again, I would have glued all the bases together and screwed all the bases together before I put the top hardwood on. It seemed like the alignment thing, even though I really marked it as best I can, kind of shifted a little bit here and there. And that caused me to have to do some more planing and cutting in some areas to make them fit perfectly. So I'll save you the boring part and just show you the glue up. And then I'll move things along. Carrying these hatches inside and out was probably the worst part. And I have no idea how many times I did it. Trying to fit them perfectly and make sure nothing rubbed. And it seemed like every time I put them in place, something else had to be tweaked to make them fit just right. So that worked out well. You can see some of these spots I got the tape stuck in between the floor and I'll just use a pick to clean them in. We have to go back in where the shower is and when I think I put the boards back in it pushed in the shower base so when I scored it it pushed them back out and they're overhanging like an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch. So we're gonna score that on the bottom and cut it on a table saw. We'll have to make like a sled. I did build myself a cross cut sled with the floor being laid out diagonally and having to deal with all these different and crazy angles. 
it was just a lot easier and I'm so glad I did. It came in useful with the rest of the floor I laid out in the bus as well. It makes a quick job of doing small fine cuts and you don't have to worry about supporting the piece. These are the floor tiles we're using and um, they're a vinyl flooring and you're supposed to be able to just score them and snap them. When it came to cutting the tile lengthwise, a pair of vice grips like this helped make the break nice and clean. It was easier to hold it with that. If I had to cut a corner, I would use this reciprocating saw to do one cut and a knife on the other cut. I was using the other tiles as a straight edge and I found out using a knife you barely need a lot of pressure. Just let the tip sink in and do its job. Once it scored, it broke easily and I just cut the backing and it was done. This gray tile went pretty smooth. I lost a lot of footage due to technical issues. I laid out this vapor barrier slash padding throughout the bus where the gray flooring is. And once I snap it in place, I went back over it with a dead blow hammer and just knocked along the seam and it seemed to interlock and the uh, gaps went away. It really worked out nicely. On along all the edges of the hatches everything was glued down including the vapor barrier rather than just stapled. The explanation for why I built my hatches the way I did was this. For me to have to replace the power steering lines I would have had to take those pans down over there. That's your trough access from the original bus. Now that's what Randy explained to me, is that when he used to repair these buses when they were transport buses, is obviously these bins were empty. So you didn't use them as a utility bay. The other side of this should be a storage bin, but they made it a mid-entrance stairwell. So there is no access here on the other side of these stairs is the generator now this is the only bin this is my storage bin that's the only bin you can access this trough and you can see the inverter is right in the way including all these wires for house electric some house electric stuff the inverter electric shore power you know etc so that would even be a chore to take that down so the big thing is, what do you do when you're on the road? So this is why, if we're on the road and we have to get into something, it's right here. All the hatches under the bed. There's only a couple sections you can't get to. I floored over this hatch, which is a very small. It goes from here to the middle of the bed. So this is the rear hatch. And this is under the bed. As short as that is, I could reach my arm through there. Now, is what I did smart? I would like to think so. But um, is there a flaw to it? Of course there is. What, what is the flaw? The flaw is the last trip I took to Hershey, when I first took off, the first part of the trip, every once in a while I get a whiff of diesel fuel. So the solution to this problem is, I'm going to take insulation and um, like foil tape and we're going to foil tape and seal the bottoms of these hatches and even in between the hatches I'll put a rubber seal. So hopefully that takes care of the fume issue and eventually I'll probably insulate the bottoms of all, all the hatches all the way back which will help in the winter time. That's the entire harness. Power supplies front and back, large cable and all the small wires. These are your heater pipes they're copper. That black tube back there is the conduit that the shifter and the throttle cable run through. Now that one you get access from under the bus and I actually changed the shifter cable when I bought this bus. It, it seized. This flooring I put down, this is a vinyl padded flooring and it, it is waterproof. So the one thing nice about it is it's easy to clean with the throw rugs 
you could roll them up and take them outside and beat them out. This is the final product. Some of the things you see in this video obviously aren't included and may be in future videos. I really wanted to give you the full finished product. Remember, hit subscribe, hit like, and hit the notification bell. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the videos. Thank you. Thank you.